Hello, everybody. Most of the time here on this channel, we talk about the macro game, meaning the big picture stuff. I figured it's time to put some info together on the micro game, with the emphasis being on playing each survivor at their absolute maximum potential. Let me know if you guys want more of these types of videos versus the more broad stuff I generally put out and leave a like or dislike to tell me whether this info was helpful or not. Before we start getting to specific survivors kits, let's begin with the micro that you need to use on everyone, and that is sprinting. If you are not sprinting in 99% of situations, you're doing it wrong. In fact, here's a list of every ability that you can use while sprinting. Commando M2, Commando Ship, Hunters M1, Hunters M2, Hunters Ship, Engineer M1, Hunters M1, R2, Engineer Ship, Direct Ship, Joe, M1, Hunters M2, Joe, Mama. As you can see, there are quite a bit of things. Sprinting not only gets you around the map faster, but more importantly, makes you a harder target to hit. Your best bet at staying alive is to run in circles and avoid all the hits coming your way. So get in the habit of pressing your sprint key after beginning the channel of any ability. The ones that are canceled by sprinting, such as Artificer's Flamethrower, you'll quickly find out about. But for the vast majority of survivors, sprinting can be done alongside anything. Speaking of maneuvering, jump all the time. Press spacebar or whatever button it is on console. Seriously, if you are not jumping, again, you are doing it wrong. Putting yourself higher than your enemies will mean the melee ones, such as beetles and imps, are rendered completely useless against you. Not only that, but the rest of the enemies, the ones that have projectiles, will have a harder time hitting you as well. All right, for most of you, though, jumping and sprinting are not anything new. So let's move on to specific micros for each survivor. Commando is a basic character by design, so there isn't much to him aside from point and shoot at what needs to die. Aside from the always sprint and jump tip, which I won't mention again because it applies to everybody, a very useful micro to know is using his shift against a slope will roll you up the slope. Take this hill on distant roost, for example. Normally, you cannot make it to the upper level via this shortcut without a hopu feather. However, if you use your shift while you're simply right next to the slope, you'll just roll right on up. This works on pretty pretty much any surface that is not a completely vertical wall. The next micro isn't as relevant because it only applies in a select few situations, but the bloom of your M1, so the decrease in accuracy due to the spreading of the crosshair, is reset upon using any ability. Notice how the spread goes back to normal after using any one of his abilities. However, again, this is not something you need to always be thinking about because you'll be using these abilities off cooldown 99% of the time, and this will just automatically occur by playing commando. You can also greatly decrease the bloom of his M1 if you continue tap M1 rather than hold it down. This is useful if you're trying to finish off that lesser wisp that is halfway across the map. Just keep tapping left click when you're trying to kill something at a distance. On multi, there aren't really any micros to learn. Rather, it's just his kit in general. Make sure you are using your shift in a sticky situation to avoid taking massive damage because it has a 66% damage reduction built in. And take Nelgun for both of his primary slots, otherwise you're trolling. If I'm missing anything on multi, let me know in the comments below. For Huntress, your shift, M2, and R will reset your momentum no matter which direction you're moving. Meaning if you're falling and about to take massive damage, simply use any ability aside from M1 to not take damage. Obviously, you'll need an enemy close by to use your M2, but Shift and R will always work. Also, both Arrow Rain and Ballista will push you up in the air slightly, meaning you can use them to reach the lead that's otherwise barely out of reach. Engineer, like Multi, doesn't really have any micros to learn, except if you want to call sticking mines on your turret's head and letting them kamikaze into things a real strat, then I guess you have that to look forward to. Now, I know I said I wouldn't mention sprinting Again, but this micro for Artificer is too important not to mention separately. If you sprint while casting Ice Wall, it will instantly place the wall. This makes targeting exactly where you want it to go much easier because there is no delay between when you cast and where you're looking when it actually goes off. Also, use your Ice Wall on bosses. I can't tell you how many times I've had to explain why I use the Ice Wall when fighting bosses on stream. Twitch.tv slash World of Gaming, by the way. Yes, the bosses cannot be frozen nor executed, but it will still deal a hefty amount of damage. Their hitboxes are much much larger than regular enemies, and thus they will break multiple segments of the wall and take quite a lot of damage, not to mention any on-hit items that are proc from the wall. And hey, all right, I was level one with no items in the clip. Trust me, it is extremely worthwhile to use the wall as damage versus bosses. No flame. Mercenary used to be the speed king before the loader came around. This was due to every ability aside from his M1 granting forward momentum. Now, with skills 2.0, loader is definitely faster at simply getting around the map. However, this does not change mercenary still being great at it. Use your shift and default M2 and R to get this mobility. Make sure you are on the ground for your M2, otherwise you'll hardly gain any forward momentum as most of it will just be pushing you upwards. And sprint after using every ability. You actually move farther when you're sprinting as dash distance scales based off of your movement speed. I guess I really lied about not mentioning sprint again, huh? Another micro on Mercenary is that his alternate M2, Rising Thunder, actually hits things in a small area underneath the slash, meaning you don't need to be perfectly on the same level as an enemy in order to damage it. With multiple backup maps, 
bags, you'll be pushed up in the air quite a distance, so know that you have a little more wiggle room than you think before you have to stop the M2 spam. Finally, on Mercenary, your M1 combo is never interrupted by your other abilities. This isn't really an animation cancel, but rather a non-combo breaker. You should always be holding the M1 on Mercenary for this reason, otherwise you're just wasting potential damage for no reason. On Rex, the first micro is very well known and is one you should figure out on your own after a few minutes of playing Rex. I'll include it here just to be safe though. Your shift can and should be used as a mobility skill. Simply jump, rotate to the opposite direction of where you want to go, and then use your shift. This will propel you backwards and in the direction you want to go. It can also be used to easily navigate vertical slopes by just looking straight down. One other micro is that your M1 attack timer is reset upon using your M2. Both Seed Volley and Seed Barrage work for this, however, Seed Barrage is much less spammable than the default M2, meaning this is really only relevant with the default one. Simply hold M1 and spam your M2 at the same time. There's no need to try and time the M2 for the perfect moment. Spamming it will give you almost identical results with much less effort. And like the commando, this isn't really something you need to be conscious of at all. Just play Rex normally and remember to hold M1 all the time and bada bing bada boom, you're doing this micro. Finally, the loader. The first and easiest micro is that you can use your grappling hook on your little lightning ball R. I'll be honest, in the many hours I've played here, I have never had to use this in the moment and rather just grapple on a surface or an enemy nearby. There's no reason to use this combo other than because it looks cool. Speaking of grappling, charging your shift, using your grapple, and releasing your shift at the apex of the curve will push you a greater distance than simply using your grapple by itself. You can get very good distances with the M2 by itself, but using your shift will give you that little extra oomph. Also, you can immediately reset your momentum in a grapple by using your shift in another direction. So if it's looking like you'll miss your target on a swing, just tap your shift to stop your movement. All right, and those are all the micros I use on a run-to-run -run basis. If I've forgotten any obvious ones or didn't mention something you do all the time, leave a comment below and let me know. If you'd like to watch me live, you can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash wooligaming and also consider joining our Discord server for a great place to talk Risk of Rain 2 or find others to play with. Thank you for watching.